So it's, it's basically it's filtering out all the frequencies below 15, below 1000 hertz, below 400, below 200, below 100, and then right down here below 50. If you've got a big arrangement like this where you've got a whole lot of different guitars and keys and vocals and things, you may find that you're getting a lot of build up at the low end and the low mid range. And what I'm going to show you here is a tip that I've started using. And look, it's a very old tip, but it's using a high pass filter, which is a very simple approach here to reduce some of those bass sounds in your instruments that don't need bass. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's come in here. First of all, let's listen to an actual bass instrument. So this is our bass in this track. It sounds like this. Let's turn it up so we can hear it. And if you're not familiar with bass frequencies, they are the ones down the bottom, funnily enough. So if we go into our visual EQ, this is a good way. I don't, use, I don't suggest you know, using the analyzer for everything, but if you come in here to your visual EQ and you turn the analyzer on, it'll help you uh, learn where some of the frequencies are in your bass. So let's play this. So you've got your primary frequencies down here. You can see it going up and down. And these are all your harmonics that are coming up here. So your main frequencies are sitting down here. Now, that is cool. We want those frequencies to be in our bass, but we don't necessarily want those frequencies to be in a lot of other instruments, including things like guitars. Now, there's some people that say, put a high pass filter on everything that isn't your kick drum and your guitars on every track. I think that might be overkill because unless you've got a lot of low rumble, uh, you know, you live next to a highway where there's big trucks going past, you're probably not going to get that much low end in your other tracks anyway. But if you're finding, so this particular track, what I'm finding at the moment is it's kind of muddy. Let, let's play it with all the instruments in here. We'll turn that bass back down a bit with all the instruments in here. You've got an ego that drives me so crazy, but I just don't know how to quit. So we've got, uh, it's sounding okay, but we want to clean up because I think, because we've got these three distorted guitars here, I actually want to take a look at these and we can do the same thing. Let's go in here to this particular one. So this is our Further Rhythm guitar over on the left. And if we turn our analyzer on. Now that's pretty clean. You can see that there's not much going on there but below that 50, 60 hertz mark, which is that sort of low rumble, even below 100 hertz here. So it's going off down there. So this is probably not causing us any trouble. Let's just do the same. We'll just come through and have a look at each of these. So let's look at this, uh, this other rhythm guitar. What's this doing? So that one may be having a little bit more in the way of rumble. So that may be something that we want to play around with. Uh, the other thing that um, is worth looking at is your vocals. So vocals can, in particular can pick up a lot because if you've ever bumped a mic stand, you get that boom kind of sound. If you've ever had a bus go past, if you happen to live near buses or trucks or trains or whatever, and you get those low rumbling sounds, or you've got a low um, like 50 hertz uh, hum that's coming from your ground or your power supply, anything like that, that's where you may want to check this out. So let's take a look at these vocals and uh, we'll again, we'll turn the analyzer on and see if we're getting any frequencies down in the lower end. You've got an ego that drives me so crazy but I just don't know how to quit You think it's okay to treat me like a not too bad yet. So if we were fine, if we had a lot of that rumbling, you'd be seeing sort of more of a static kind of thing down here that would be uh, would be a problem. However, if you've got these problems and if you've got something, so say we go with this one that we did have too much, you can use this. So you can use your visual EQ to just ramp it off like that. But that's going to actually color up the sound quite a bit. So uh, I'll, I'll show you what this will do. We'll, we'll use this one. It's only going to be on one side if you're on stereo. So apologies for that. It's going to be on the right or the left. <laughs> That's what I meant, the left. So if we bring this down, it's not actually a true high pass filter because you can see how it's ramping down everything in that 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz range. We don't really want that. We want it to kind of mm, chop right down there from maybe the 100 hertz or even the 200 hertz. We don't want it to go that far down or even 50 hertz just to get rid of all that low rumble. So you can use this in your analyzer to kind of determine what you need. But GarageBand has actually built in a whole bunch of, uh, of plugins here that are going to help us out. So if we edit this track and what aren't we using at the moment? We're not using that flanger. So 
filter. Actually, we're not using the track reverb. We'll get rid of that. We can actually add in this filter. So if we hit the plus button here and go to audio unit extensions, if we scroll on down to the bottom here, you can see here we've got all of these ones and one of them that we have is a very very simple high pass filter so if we tap on the high pass filter and then we tap on this apple logo look at what we got here it is literally just a straight high pass filter so and you can see here that instead of it doing what the other one did where it sort of it ramps everything down I mean, you can sort of make it like that if you want to but you can also control it on two axes here so you can make sure that it's only going down from the frequency that you want it from so say you wanted to ramp it down and you wanted to put your high pass filter at 100 hertz to roll off everything there below 50 hertz and make sure that you're reducing it between 50 and 100 hertz you can put it there like that so let's see how this actually sounds if we if we bring it all the way up here you're going to get a weird kind of sound so it's it's basically it's filtering out all the frequencies below 15 below a thousand hertz below 400 below 200 below 100 and then right down here below 50 so often you want to use this like right down here because it's not actually the really audible sounds that you're going to get but it's to remove some of that rumble and some of that stuff that you might have in there so that's going to uh, remove that out there and then if we bring this back into our track and take a play you got an ego that drives me so crazy but i just don't know how to quit and see how now that we've gone back to our analyzer, because we've got that, there is literally nothing down here. So if you're seeing big build-ups down here, the easiest way to get rid of it is to jump in here and use your high pass filter. It's a simple plugin, it does one thing and it does it well and you'll be good to go.